Atraxa is probably the most popular commander there is, at least according to EDH Rec, which makes sense as she gives access to a lot of colors and she can be built in a lot of different ways, ranging from super friends to plus one plus one counter decks to dedicated infect or even something like the sagas, or maybe just a mix of all of those. Today we're trying something a little different, which is Phyrexian Tribal. It's a tribe that needless to say has gotten a lot of support lately and I think we're now at the point where we got enough Phyrexian matter stuff to build a super solid deck. The proliferate trigger we get from Atraxa in the end step will still be super relevant as there will of course be poison counters flying around as a lot of the good Phyrexian cards just happen to have either toxic or infect. Also the incubate mechanic works really well with proliferate as well as some other stuff we'll get to later in the video. I also want to mention, in case it flew under your radar, that when they first created the creature type Phyrexian with Vorinclex Monstrous Raider that got printed in Kaldheim, they made a big errata and added the creature type to a lot of old cards, including the commander of this deck, Atraxa, as well as a few other cards that are in the list. Now, let's move to the 99. We got Grafted Butcher as our new 2 mana lord which is way above rate considering what you can usually expect out of such a card. Sculpted Perfection is an anthem for Phyrexians that also incubates too. Essence of Orthodoxy incubates too when it itself or any other Phyrexian enters the battlefield and note that this does not say non-token which means that even something like a little mite will trigger this. And Phyrexian Sensor is a sweet little hate bear for the tribe preventing a lot of strategies from going off before this is dealt with. Blade Splicer, Venser, Corpse Puppet, Malkator, Purity Overseer, Darksteel Splicer, Skrell's Hive, Viscrest and Doomhive, Phyrexian Swamplord and Nyssa Ascended Animus are all really solid ways of developing multiple Phyrexian bodies on the battlefield. And as you can see we got a little bit of a secondary tribe with all these golem synergies and the amount of golems you can make particularly with Darksteel Splicer is just absurd since it also gives the golems indestructible meaning your opponents will have to go through this before they can sweep the board of golems. Nissa can also be a pretty good repeatable disenchant effect, but we're really not playing her for the ultimate as we're obviously playing a lot of non-forest lands in our 4 color deck, however it can probably end a game from time to time. We also play a few big bad praetors with some new and old Elish Norn and Shieldred alongside Wormcoil Engine as they're just super solid Phyrexians in terms of overall card quality. We're of course also playing some of the tribal payoffs that work with any tribe with Etchens of the Chosen, Herald's Horn, Door of Destinies and Vanquish's Banner. Proliferating counters on the Door of Destiny can get out of hand pretty quickly. We also got Pyre of Heroes for some tribal potting to find our best corrections for a given situation. And lastly we got Breach the Multiverse as our big splashy Phyrexian finisher. Super powerful effect. Also gotta give props for the flavor on this card. As I alluded to in the intro, Proliferate is also gonna play a role in the deck as a lot of the good Phyrexian creatures make it matter. First we got a few creatures that apply poison counters with Venerated Rod Priest, Bloated Contaminator, Ica Rats and Contaminant Grafter. Rod Priest punishes spot removal, Contaminator is a big beater that also proliferates when it connects, Icarats just throws poison counters on everyone, and Contaminant Grafter is kind of bloated Contaminator's big brother as it makes any creature connecting proliferate while also providing both ramp and card draw if corruption is online. Then there are also a handful of cards with the new incubate mechanic with Progenitor Exarch, Norns Inquisitor, Bloated Processor, Elish Norn, Brimas Blight of Arescus, and Glissa Herald of Predation. As mentioned, this mechanic works great with proliferation. We also got just a little bit of a plus one plus one counter theme with a non Inquisitor and Bloated Processor. And Elish Norn is obviously absurdly strong if you get to flip her into the Saga half. I mean, that's probably just gonna end the game, but I think the front side's actually stronger than people give her credit for. It actually punishes a lot of things if you think about it. And Glissa is looking really scary, not just because she can flip all the incubators, which is of course a very strong ability, but giving all our Phyrexians Death Touch and First Strike, I mean that's a pretty nutty combination of keywords that seems incredibly strong. We also have Filigree Vector and Defiler of Vigor that can put plus one plus one counters on the whole team multiple times in the case of Defiler. 
Also, we do have a few artifacts that care about having charge counters on them. The only battle in the deck is Invasion of New Capenna, which is also a way of putting counters on all the Phyrexians, if we can defeat it, that is. The front side's also okay, I mean, we can sacrifice a Mite or an Incubator and it will be a fine removal spell, but it's definitely here for the backside. Archfiend of the Dross is another card that first and foremost is a big Phyrexian that punishes any kind of sacrifice oriented strategy, but of course at the price of, you know, eventually losing the game, unless of course you proliferate the oil counters so that never happens. We also have a number of backup proliferators in Thrummingbird, Norn's Choirmaster and Vraska Betrayal Sting as well as some proliferate doublers with Tekotal, Inquiry Dominus, Vorinclex, Monstrous Raider and Doubling Season. A doubling Season also works pretty well with all the Golem token generators and also having either Doubling Season or Vorinclex in play as you cast Vraska lets you combo kill one of your opponents immediately as Vraska will be able to ultimate right away. We're playing EDH so we need some card draw. Trying to stay on theme, we got most of it attached to some Phyrexian bodies with Realm Walker, Gix Yawgmoth Praetor, Isuri Stalker of Spheres and Atraxa Grand Unifier. We're mostly a creature deck, but we do also have an okay spread of card types, so we can expect a good amount of card draw out of big Atraxa. As mentioned, we even got the one battle in here. We also got Black Market Connections, which does everything you want, including pumping out 3-2 changelings, that of course also counts as Phyrexians. And then we got Guardian Project, which is just really good in any creature-oriented EDH deck with access to green. We're aiming to cast some pretty expensive Phyrexians, so we're gonna need some ramp. Armored Scrap Gorger might not seem like the strongest mana dog in EDH, but it's a Phyrexian and it comes with additional utility in the form of Graveyard Hate. And then we got some Mana Rocks. Glistening Sphere is yet another way of proliferating, and if Corrupted is online, it suddenly taps for a lot of mana. Astral Cornucopia is probably the Mana Rock with the highest ceiling here, considering all the ways we got of upping the amount of charge counters on it, which can lead to some absurd amounts of mana produced. And then lastly, we got some green land ramp with Nature's Law, Fossseek and three visits. These are really good at color fixing and they're not weak to artifact removal like the mana rocks. We're not playing a whole lot of interaction as our primary goal is to be the player that needs to be interacted with, but we do have a few slots dedicated to this. Again, we're trying to stay on theme, so most of our interaction comes attached to a Phyrexian. We got Viridian Corruptor and Canker Bloom as our disenchant effects. I mean, Corruptor is obviously just a worse Reclamation Sage, but we want all the Phyrexians we can get. We also have Skrelf Defector Might, mostly to protect our important creatures from opposing interaction, but also works well as another Phyrexian creature with proliferate synergy. And then we have White Sun's Twilight as our only sweeper. That's gonna leave us with a bunch of Phyrexian Mites on the battlefield. And lastly, we're playing Swords to Plowshares. This is the one removal spell I pretty much always include in any deck with access to White, as it's just so efficient at what it does. Alright, thanks a lot for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful for your own deck building. If you did, I would very much appreciate it if you'd consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. It's an easy and free way of supporting me in my content creation endeavors. By the way, if you're interested in the full decklist, there'll be a link in the description where you can check out the mana base I built for the deck. You can also copy the list and make your own adjustments if you're planning on building a version of this deck. If that's your plan, I'd very much like to hear what you think of the list and what you might do differently in the comments down below. Again. Thanks a lot for the view, until next time.